Today, I'm quite delighted to actively participate in this seminar of the 56th Annual Conference of Bombay Orthopedic Society in collaboration with the Egyptian Orthopedic Association. I have no potential conflicts of interests. So if you think that every patellar fracture is an easy one and without complications, please let's have a look on this one. Tricky one, isn't it? So inadequate treatment of such challenging injuries might lead to profound impairment due to its crucial function in the extensor mechanism of the knee. So the learning outcomes of this talk will include elaboration on different fixation options of patellar fractures, to discuss the evidence-based review of the results, and to elaborate on the complications and how to avoid them. So let's start with the indications of operative treatment of patellar fractures. They include more than two millimeters of displacement, more than two millimeters of articular incongruity, osteochondral fractures, as well as compromised extensor mechanism. So what are the surgical goals of fixation of patellar fractures? Anatomic reduction, restoration of the extensor mechanism, minimizing patellar bone loss, stable fixation, as well as early rehabilitation. So regarding the current literature review of fixation of patellar fractures, we could found that there are many different surgical interventions as well as many complications. The operative management options include tension band as well as modified tension band, percutaneous and arthroscopic assisted open reduction internal fixation in addition to plates and screws, external fixation as well as partial and total patellectomy which are rarely done nowadays. So let's have a look at individual procedures. Starting with the tension band fixation, regarding the classic AO technique, this is the gold standard for transverse fractures as well as common muted fractures, provided there is an intact posterior cortex to allow for compression. It's cost effective and the most popular technique. So how it actually works theoretically? Well, the anterior tension band converts the tensile forces on the anterior aspect of the knee joint into compression forces at the joint line. So the classic AO technique of tension band fixation would include the use of two parallel K wires, anterior tension band of a stainless steel wire in a vertically oriented figure of eight pattern and wire tightening at the two sides. As we could see here, these are the X-rays showing the completed osteosynthesis of the patellar fixation using the tension band technique. Are the K wires necessary? Well, they counteract the inherent elasticity of the stainless steel wires alone and make the tension band wiring construct more stable. So which tension band wiring configuration? I came across this uh, biomechanical study in GOT in 1987, which actually tested four types of fixation in experimental conditions, including the lot K wiring and Magnuson wiring without K wires, and these showed inadequate fixation to allow early range of movement. In addition, the screw fixation showed the least displacement but needs strong bone. Finally, the, modi the modified tension band wiring technique showed the most consistent results. I came across another study in GOT in 1994, and it was questioning the value of addition of screws. And actually, all techniques did well with less than one millimeter of displacement. However, the addition of screws did better. Does the addition of encircling wire help? Well, it would significantly increase the compressive strains which are high throughout the whole range of movement. Another important question, one or two twists. Well, studies showed that in the vertical configuration, two twists increase compression by 12% compared to a single twist. 
Regarding placement of the twists, placing the two twists in adjacent corners increased compression by a further 18%. And whether to use vertical or horizontal tension band wiring, studies showed that there is increased interfragmentary compression and stability in horizontal tension band. With horizontal figure of 8 loop and twists at adjacent corners, there was 63% increase in the interfragmentary compression. In addition, some clinical studies support that placing a figure of eight tension band construct in a horizontal orientation can provide functional benefits in the early stage after patellar fractures fixation. What are the complications of this technique? They include loss of fixation, implant breakage, painful rehabilitation, in addition to K-wire migration and the need for implant removal. In addition, there is soft tissue irritation and the need for revision surgery in 65% of cases, which is really a very high percentage. Regarding implant intolerance, I came across one of the studies in 2010, which showed that 33% of patients required removal for implant-related symptom. This increases in younger patients up to 40% at a mean of 11 months. And this led to the necessity for developing new strategies to avoid implant-related complications and second surgeries. In addition, Reoperation rates of 33.6% in one of the meta-analyses of 24 studies, in addition to infection rate of 3.2% in a meta-analysis of 18 studies. Finally, non-union rate was encountered in 1.3% in a meta-analysis of 15 studies. Another interesting case report showed that uh, looking of the knee occurred after intra-articular migration of a broken patellar tension band wire via the pseudo-arthrosis line. So a very important question, can we reduce soft tissue problems? Let's start with lag screw fixation without tension band wiring. Well, this could be indicated in vertical fractures, simple transverse, and in cases with adequate bone stock. It would preserve the vascular supply and soft tissue, decrease the operative time and loss of fixation, decrease symptomatic hardware, but beware, this shouldn't be applied in osteoporotic bone, otherwise it might cut through. Regarding the modified tension band technique with the cannulate screws, it is a very valuable technique and compared to the conventional tension band wiring technique, it improves fracture reduction, reduces the healing time and associated with better knee scores, less implant migration, less reoperation rate. We need to take into consideration that the screw length is critical and it has to be short and not to protrude uh, beyond the patellar bone to avoid rapid wire failure. In addition, the modified tension band or cannulate screw fixation could be applied percutaneously and this would preserve the vascular supply of the patellar fragments and decrease the risk of postoperative adhesions and contractures in addition to the arthroscopic assisted reduction as well as percutaneous screw fixation. There is also the technique of non-absorbable high-resistance sutures fixation, which provides sufficient stability and could be considered as a suitable alternative. The fiber wire is showed to be more resistant than the stainless steel wires. It showed better stress distribution and it easily achieved proximity of the suture to the bone. It decreased the reoperation rate and no need for second surgery for removal. There is usually a concern for bad fixation in complex fractures, including comminuted as well as periprosthetic in addition to distal patellar pole fractures. So it's not an easy procedure. This led to the development of a specific patellar plates, including new generation of several designs, which provides an elegant method of fixation in comminuted fractures. The plate fixation provides 
additional stability and is quite helpful in osteoporotic bone and showed good to excellent results in biomechanical testing. One of the studies showed that fixed angle plates accomplish stable and sustainable fracture reduction without significant displacement and found to be significantly more stable than modified anterior tension band and cannulated screws with anterior tension band. Regarding osteosynthesis of the distal patellar pole, the conventional basket plate was found to be very useful in fixation of comminuted fractures of the distal pole. It allows parallel and oblique screws fixation and associated with favorable functional results. In addition, non-specific plates from other locations like the foot and hand small fragment plates, the skull, as well as calcaneal plates uh, were found to be useful uh, in fixation of comminuted patellar fractures. In addition, there are also star plates and arrow plates which could be used in fixation of patellar fractures. There is also the variable angle looking patellar plating system which is popularized by the AO. These variable angle uh, patellar plates include anterior patellar plates as well as lateral rim plates and they include variety of low profile plates with variable angle locking technology. They provide stable fixation of simple as well as complex fractures. They include some templates to aid in plate selection and contouring, in addition to in situ bending and instrumentation. They have reproducible surgical technique, and that's how they look on the post-operative x-rays. In addition, the titanium mesh could be used as a buttress for fracture fixation. It is easily contoured, has very low profile, and has multiple holes for screw placement. I came across one of the biomechanical studies in 2015, which showed that the titanium mesh compared with the standard tension band fixation maintained a smaller fracture gap prior to failure. So regarding the plates and in summary, they showed promising results. However, larger prospective series with longer follow-up are required. There is also compressive external fixation, which could be used as a stable method of fixation in patellar fractures and allows immediate motion. The open as well as infected fractures are the best candidates. Finally, fixation of patellar fractures could be achieved by combination of different techniques, including plates plus screws plus minus tension band fixation. And this could be uh, utilized in severely comminuted patellar fractures in high demand patients that are not amenable to tension band, external fixation or circulage wire fixation. Finally, I came across this interesting Cochrane review in 2015 about interventions for treating fractures of the patella in adults, and it showed that there is actually very limited evidence from RCTs about the relative effects of different surgical interventions for treating these fractures in adults. And to conclude, tension band wiring technique, if done well, it could give good outcomes. Preferably, we could use horizontal loops with two adjacent twists. The screws could be applied in strong bones with no comminution, and plates showed promising results. We have also discussed about how to avoid implant issues, irritation, as well as complications, and there is actually very limited evidence from the RCTs about fixation options. Thank you very much.